Hi there and welcome to this video course on being a fiction writer. You can dip in and out of these videos, watch them in whatever order you like, doesn't matter according to your needs. In this video I'll be talking about one of the most important things a professional writer does and that's planning your novel before you write it. So if you're interested in following me on this journey, learning more about what it takes to be a professional writer or maybe just getting your novel finished and getting some support with that, make sure you click below to like and subscribe to this channel and get the notifications. Bing! To introduce myself very briefly so you know you can trust my expertise on this subject, my name is Jane Holland and I'm a best-selling novelist. I've been writing and publishing mass market and other fiction in one form or another for several decades now. More recently, I've had a UK Kindle chart number one best-selling thriller and multiple other novels of mine have hit the US and UK top 100 Kindle charts. It's not just about selling copies though, but knowing how to please readers. So let's talk about planning your novel. Now this is something that most professional writers and nearly all commercial writers need to do before setting pen to paper or finger to keyboard. Uh, if you're not sure what a commercial writer is, it's basically someone who writes genre or mass market uh, fiction, i.e. fiction aimed at as large a readership as possible. Though this can sometimes still be a niche, actually. Uh, for instance, thrillers or romances um, can have sub-genres within them. For me, not planning my novels before writing them would be like marrying someone that I'd never met. <laughs> you know, you, you need to know what you're getting into. So what is a plan? Here are some words and phrases you'll need to be familiar with as a professional writer. Synopsis. Outline. Plot. Character arc. Synopsis first. A synopsis is basically the same thing as an outline. It's what happens in your book. It's the structure from beginning to end. In the beginning this happens, in the middle that happens, at the end that happens. So that's your synopsis. But it's, it's the same as an outline except that a synopsis is what I call a selling document. So it's designed to be sent specifically to a professional person in the publishing industry, such as an agent, an editor, publisher, usually along with a sample of your book or your full manuscript, depending on what that person requires. Always check beforehand on their website. While an outline is a lot less formal and could be used by you to determine the order of events in your novel, or just to check occasionally when you're writing to make sure you haven't drifted off course, a synopsis is slightly different. A synopsis tells the basic story of your novel from beginning to end, including who done it, and would usually include just a little information about each of the major characters. Hopefully you won't have too many. Um, this could be something as simple as their age and uh, their profession in brackets, or, you know, divorced accountant 54, whatever. Um, unless you're writing um, a slightly more touchy-feely novel, um, in which case you might want to be a bit more flowery about them, but I wouldn't advise it myself. A synopsis would ordinarily be single-spaced. Um, your manuscript would be double-spaced, generally. This depends who you're sending to, but generally speaking, double-spaced manuscript, single-spaced synopsis. And a synopsis wouldn't normally be more than one to three pages unless they specifically ask you for more so always check beforehand. Um, when you're writing an outline just for yourself you can describe your characters in huge detail as much as you want really you know Marjorie 54 divorced accountant a fussy dresser loathes the smell of lavender because it reminds her of home all that whatever more but um, for a synopsis, your space is going to be more limited. So only mention main characters and main plot points in a synopsis. So returning to character arcs and plot arcs. These are very simply the way a character or a plot changes and resolves its internal dilemmas from the beginning of the story to its end. Think Scrooge. Here's a man who hates holidays and festivities, never thinks of anyone but himself, and 
is taken on an internal journey that he angrily resists at first, but which changes him so much that by the end of the story, or arc, he is able to wish others with perfect sincerity a Merry Christmas. There you go. Plot and character arc in a nutshell. Now, plot and character arcs can be suggested in your synopsis, your selling document, or in your outline that you're writing for yourself. But often, the simple recounting of the plot itself should be enough to make these arcs obvious without spelling them out directly. Though sometimes a summing up line right at the end can help, i.e. Marjorie marries Captain Tom and gives up her dull office job for a life at sea. Most novels start as a single idea. Maybe you spot something in a newspaper and think, with a little tweak, that could make quite an interesting novel idea. Or you dream up an intriguing character, or or an image, or a line or two of dialogue just pops into your head while you're doing the washing up, or driving home from the supermarket. Often for me, um, the initial inspiration for a novel will come across as an image um, which is like a visual scene playing inside my head, like a little extract from something I've seen on television or in a film, but it's my own original idea. So I get this quick flash of something in my head, character, dialogue, whatever, setup, situation, and then I start asking questions um, about it in my head and the plot will start to flesh itself out as I answer those questions. Um, Perhaps I see two lovers parting reluctantly at dawn. You have to ask yourself why. Is it an illicit affair with one or both of them already married? Or is there some obstacle that's stopping them from being together? Maybe a family feud like Romeo and Juliet. (laughs) The old ones are the best. Um, Or I might see something for the start of a thriller. I might imagine a man creeping along a dark passageway, perhaps with a long knife in his hand. So the questions I'd then start to ask myself is, who is this man? Um, Where is he going and why? Is this his house or someone else's? Is he about to (laughs) murder someone, for instance? Or is someone coming to murder him and he's um, reacting in self-defence, you know? hunting through the house looking for his uh, pursuer. Maybe I see a body twisting slowly in the wind. This is all very grim stuff if you're (laughs) here for romance. Um, Whose body is it? What has happened to them? Um, If it's a murder, who is going to find that body? And what impact will that have on them? Um, Will they be suspected, perhaps, of, of having murdered them? You know, do they know the person who's dead or are they a complete stranger? And and so it kind of snowballs that the plot starts to snowball as I start answering all these different questions. And so you start with something small and you ask questions and start to flesh out your story. So you've got your image or your character or your snippet of dialogue, whatever intrigued you in the beginning to start writing this book. And you've started asking yourself questions about it. Now, From that brief idea or line or concept or image springs character and plot. These form your basic plan, the blueprint of a novel. It's at this stage that I like to grab some rough paper, a back of an envelope, whatever, and start sketching it out as soon as possible, before the idea is lost, because ideas are very ephemeral, they can drift off into the ether if you don't catch them quickly. Like a dream, you wake up after a dream. If you don't write it down immediately, you forget what it was. And novel ideas can be like that. Now, there are some writers, uh, plenty of writers probably, um, who are shaking their heads right now at my foolishness, um, who would simply sidestep all that planning stage and sit down with their image and write what they feel. Let it all come out and not worry too much. Um, these people are known in the trade as pantsers, as in they write by the seat of their pants. <laughs> they have no desire 
to know in advance how their novel is going to pan out, how it's going to end, because that would spoil the surprise for them. So they sit down, they write out that intriguing line of dialogue or that wonderful spooky image, whatever came into their head at the beginning, and whiz, they're away, thumping the keys, page after page, until they finally discover for themselves who done it. Now, no doubt um, these writers don't have editors waiting for the books or editors who want to know in advance what they're paying for. Perhaps these writers write each book on spec, as it's called, um, not under contract, and hope that they will sell it later. All I know is that I tend to write um, one novel on spec and then, once sold, try to get to a multiple book contract. Now, it's at the stage of book two or three or whatever in your contract that you'll be required to submit a synopsis or full outline before the editor in question signs off on your idea. I usually would morph this synopsis into an outline. So you keep the synopsis for the editor, but then you take the synopsis for yourself in a separate document and it morphs into an outline where I can then put in things like chapters if I want to or uh, sections at least and write more about what the characters are doing and who they are. So that is, it means that I can produce a selling document and a writing document at the same time. So after years of drifting along shapelessly in my literary dream, writing a novel finally became all about structure. Structure, sequence, beginning, middle, end, goal, obstacle, success, resolution, disaster, trigger, all those words. Planning has as much to do with an understanding of microstructure, um, which is something that we actually learn instinctively as children listening to nursery rhymes and fairy stories. You know, we, we, we know what's going to happen. After you've heard a few fairy stories, you start to, you know, automatically suspect what's coming next. There's an element of repetition to it, but also um, of increasing pace and pressure. For instance, um, Goldilocks. So she tries Daddy Bear's porridge. It's too hot. Then Mummy Bear's porridge, too cold. But Baby Bear's porridge is just right. And she then commits the cardinal sin, as we all know, of eating it all up and curling up to sleep on, you've guessed it, Baby Bear's bed. Because Baby Bear's bed was the only one that suited her. So you have a kind of structure there. And you need to learn to... It sounds simplistic, but you need to learn to put that kind of structure onto your novel. In basic terms, your main character enters the first scene in one situation, then makes a decision or turn in a different direction, usually because of some large triggering event. Some people call this the inciting incident. But it doesn't matter what you call it, as long as it happens. As long as something happens that drives your character um, or forces your character to act in some way that turns them away from the original situation they were in right at the start. Now this normally happens very very quickly. Some books it might happen in the first line, others it takes a couple of chapters to warm up. You have to decide what's normal for your genre and what's uh, right for you and your novel. So a new goal has been set for your main character or characters. Win the lover's heart, rescue the hostage, uh, save the world, or perhaps just survive a series of dangerous obstacles. Choosing the right porridge bowl, for instance, sleeping on the right bed, or in the right person's bed, in a romance perhaps. These obstacles operate like a kind of crescendo so they grow in intensity, each one more dangerous and stressful than the last, until um, at the end the ultimate test has to be faced. Now, in some genres they call this the dark moment, okay? the point at which things seem like they can't get any worse. Um, but usually, just before that, things seem to be going the main character's way. You know, for instance, Goldilocks again. She's found the right bed to sleep on. She managed to get the right porridge to eat. So all going well. But then suddenly a mistake is made. 
or a baddie that we thought we defeated earlier unexpectedly re-enters the fray or in Goldilocks case the family of bears comes back to menace our sleeping heroine and uh, all hope is lost the dark moment now as writers, we have to steer our characters through the whirlpool of this dark moment and out the other side into catharsis, um, sailing on into the future, all questions answered, all loose threads drawn up and satisfactorily resolved. So at some level, at least, your plan needs to represent these successive crescendo-like stages of the archetypal story. You may be a very organised person and want to be quite methodical about it, perhaps estimating chapter lengths and events within each chapter, drawing up charts or graphs or uh, getting a whiteboard and a series of sticky notes. I, I do like sticky notes myself. Or you may dash off your loose plan on the back of an envelope and then pin it above your desk so you can have a kind of lodestar, if you like, to, to keep you in the right direction. Or you might just want to chuck your back of an envelope into the bin and start again, who knows. Whatever works for you is best, though I do advocate planning. But if it isn't working best, if it isn't working at all and things are going wrong, you might want to stop and try a different method or try to be more methodical. I have been known to scribble things on the back of an envelope and then promptly lose that envelope. So I do highly recommend the whiteboard, whiteboard sorry, and stickies uh, route. And in fact, you can take photos of these so that you don't lose them. So if you do scribble on the back of an envelope, get your phone and take a quick photo so you can't lose it ever. OK, <laughs> so if an opening image occurs to me or I have a thought about what needs to happen in the plot uh, wherever I am in my novel, I can scribble it down on a whiteboard or on a sticky note or in my notebook, which I would then, if it's a sticky note, I put on the wall next to my desk or notebook next to my desk. It does save having to recall which notebook you wrote it in. If you have one, one notebook going, I usually have about five and then I have no idea which one that idea was in or where to find it. So the trick is remembering to go back and check your stickies and your whiteboard, not to find them after you've finished the novel and think, ah, yeah, I was going to do that and it's too late now. Oops. Every story has a story arc that exists in your head long before it exists on paper or in the cloud. This can be a very simple structure, even simplistic um, the opening set up, the complication, the resolution. For truly massive, multi-character novels, this shape can become horrendously complex for you to map out. I, I, I have done this. I've written massive books with four narrative points of view. You have to take in every different event in within any number of characters' lives. And the high points and low points all have to coincide to create a really strong climax. And that is difficult. The important part of planning is to establish that arc in your subconscious so that while you're typing away furiously at night, maybe lost in some character's deep internal struggle, um, your brain will be remembering that arc without you even realising it and instinctively laying it down and sticking to it as each of the scenes unfolds. So, and you, you might want to jot this down actually, make sure your story or synopsis has a clear beginning or setup. The beginning or setup is where we start from, the origin the everyday reality of your main characters, which could last a few pages or a few lines before we're suddenly whisked into the next one, which is the inciting incident. The thing that starts us all off on this quest, journey, whatever. Something happens that plunges your main character into the heart of the story. Think of Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, 
her house blows away during a tornado and she ends up in this bizarre place, the land of Oz. Okay, so that was her inciting incident. She wants to get home. So along the way, these characters will be thwarted by various plot point reversals. Um, this is where what we thought we knew turns out to be something completely different. Uh, the TV show Lost, for instance, <laughs> where we were all lost, um, became so full of, of major plot point reversals that it became hard to keep track of what was actually going on at any set moment. So some of us didn't really understand what was going on, but, but it was fun. It was fun trying to work it out, intriguing, certainly. And the last season was gripping. Um, and the last season was, in fact, that dark moment, the dark moment of the soul, a real ordeal. And your characters have to go through that ordeal um, to get through to the resolution. So they go through some ordeal of some kind. Um, usually it has to be connected to the setup where there was a problem, the, the inciting incident. This is the ordeal where you have to you have to face right down the end of the line. You have to decide how your characters are going to deal with that situation. You can't have them go back to bed and get under the duvet. You know, they have to get out there. They have to sort out their lives. They have to take responsibility for what's happened. Um, and when they do this, they will then have a satisfactory resolution of the opening problem or obstacle otherwise known as the end. Whew. But if you really can't face the idea of knowing in advance how your novel will end, because then there will be no surprises for you, there's always the pantser, no planning, type chapter one and just start writing approach to novel writing. Good luck with that. Now, before I end, let me ask you, these important questions. Listen up. Are you a natural planner or a pantser? Do you write a full outline before starting your novel or do you just wing it? And how has that worked out for you? Would changing your approach improve the way your novels turn out or maybe speed up the process of writing them, which can be important as you become professional? Could you experiment with a different method to see how it pans out? Or would that be too painful? So there you have it. This video has hopefully given you some great ideas on plotting and planning, which I hope you have jotted down and will now stick to the wall above your desk. You can follow this uh, video by subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, looking up my other videos, looking up my books on Amazon, there should be links in the uh, video description below for you to check those things out and remember watch the next video in this course or one of my other videos i look forward to seeing you again in just a few seconds